Hi, my name is Dave Thomason. I had lunch with Yasser Nakvi, MPP for Ottawa Centre a while ago. I was representing ACORN. Yasser Nakvi, MPP, agreed with ACORN that the Ontario Disability Support Program income clawback is discrimination against Ontario's disabled people. The ODSP income clawback discourages disabled people who want to help themselves. It violates the equality of disabled people and actively discriminates against disabled people trying to cope with crushing cutbacks. Please raise your voice, tell your MPP, stop the ODSP income clawback, respect the equality of Ontario's disabled people. Hi, my name is Kathleen Fortin. Um, I'm on social assistance. And I just want to uh, make the government aware of the impact that they're having on um, people with, that are on ODSP and OW. I would like the government to stop uh, the income clawbacks it's really affecting people. Um, that's taking 50% off of their checks uh, for whatever income they make. Um, also, uh, to uh, re-implement the home renovation plan, um, which has already been cut. Um, and also to um, keep the um, startup allowance. This really affects people that are that are going into transition, um, say from a halfway house to um, getting an apartment. They will not be able to get first and last month's rent paid for if they need to get their hydro hooked up. They won't be able to get their hydro hooked up. I just would like the government to hear my plea as well as everyone else's plea uh, how this is affecting people. Um, how you can make a difference is to call your MPP and tell them your concerns that you do not want this cut, these cuts to take place. Um, we would also like to raise the rates back to 1992 levels when Mike, Mike Harris was in government. He took 22% of um, ODSP uh, rates away from people on social assistance. Call your MPP. Thank you. of Ottawa ACORN and I'm here to talk about ODSP recipients and the challenges that they face. Uh, there are some issues that uh, I'm concerned about as a member of ACORN, as a citizen of Ottawa um, and as someone who has a family member that is a recipient of uh, ODSP. Uh, to start, I would just like to say that the proposed uh, cut to the uh, Community Startup and Maintenance Benefit that will come into effect in January 2013 is something that I do not agree with. Um, people on disability uh, have a hard time uh, maintaining their homes and uh, ma maintaining other important uh, aspects of their lives. Uh, and this is just one more challenge that will be thrown their way. Um, or I should say, this, this is just one thing that would benefit them. And to have this service cut uh, for potential recipients, uh, for you know, existing recipients, is uh, not, not right. It's not just. Everybody deserves safe, affordable housing, plain and simple. And this threatens that right. I'd also like to talk about the rates 
that uh, ODSP recipients uh, get. Currently, I, I don't think they're enough. A lot of people would agree with that. Um, Mike Harris made some very severe cuts uh, to social assistance back in uh, the 1990s, and they need to be reversed, especially since the cost of living keeps going up and uh, people just can't keep pace, especially those on social assistance. I mean, they have needs that need to be met, uh, nutritional needs, uh, needs in terms of, of transportation that, the, that a non-disabled person uh, does not have. And so these cuts that Mike Harris made uh, hurt ODSP recipients severely and need to, need to be reversed. Uh, finally, I'd like to talk about the income clawback. Uh, when someone on social assistance decides to uh, start a business or, or, or you know, seek employment, unfortunately any compensation or any assets uh, related to owning a business uh, even even assets I should I should extend that and say assets such as a car, all those things are, call, are clawed back for ODSP recipients um, while they're receiving ODSP. And that poses a challenge to disabled people uh, in terms of being able to uh, supplement uh, their ODSP uh, checks, which, as I mentioned previously, are not substantial. Um, they, they can't get ahead. It's not that they can't even, you know, maintain the current their current state of existence, which is you know, pretty, pr it's pretty challenging to say the least. Uh, they can't get ahead. They can't try to, you know, extend their, their earnings and with that Im improve th their lives. And so I think the income clawback is is unjust, and I, I think uh, it uh, needs needs to be seriously uh, looked at. I know that as a member of Acorn, uh, I have confidence that the community of uh, of people who you know support ODSP recipients can fight back and say, "Listen, we want to see a better way forward because." People on ODSP have suffered long enough, and I, I think we'll, we'll face those challenges head on, and I think we'll do really well in, in doing so. We've got a lot of ideas, we've got a lot of creative people out there, and we can make a difference. Thank you for your time. Hi, my name is Michelle Warren. I'm a resident of Ottawa. I'm on ODSP. And uh, recently, in the last few years, I've been able to work. I, um, I teach classes online and uh, I'm actually teaching English to students in South Korea by way of the internet. And 50% of whatever I make is clawed back because ODSP thinks that even though I'm living drastically below the poverty line, I can't have 100% of what I earn. It makes life difficult. I can't often afford food. I'm right now three months behind rent and facing eviction tomorrow. And I think that one of the things that really upsets me is that I'm doing better than a lot of people who are in my situation on ODSP. A lot of people aren't working. A lot of people don't have internet savvy and, and teaching experience to, to work. Uh, do the kind of work that I'm doing. I really wish that they would understand that they're creating more problems. The government is creating much more problems than they're solving by clawing back people's wages, not raising the allotment rates to the amount that a person can live off of. They are causing stress, which is going to exacerbate anybody's health condition, but especially people who are already ill, and that's why they're on ODSP. 
I really wish, I really hope, and no, you know what, I'm not hoping, I'm not wishing, I'm actually going to work with Acorn and make this change. I'm not going to rest until McGinty understands. It's not fair. I pay taxes, and plus 50% of what I earn is clawed back, and I'm still below the poverty line. I actually live on about a third less than what the poverty line for a single individual is expected to live on, if they're in poverty. So I don't know, we have to find another name for what, I, what I'm living in and what people, and I'm doing good compared to most people on ODSP. Without ACORN, we just don't have much help. We don't have much hope, we don't have much. What can we do? We have to organize, we have to raise our voices, we have to let people understand what's going on and how this affects us. And that is just not fair. It's not fair, it's not productive, it's not beneficial to anybody. It's not what Canadians want. Hello, my name is Linda Furlot and I am a member of Ottawa Acorn. I am a person who is blind from birth. I have gone through tremendous effort to acquire an education to achieve my goal of an employee, of, of a, a job, despite having to jump through flaming hoops to do this. I have been largely unsuccessful in my many attempts due to the simple fact that I am blind and no one is forced to hire me no matter how hard the government policies pretend to encourage employees to do so. How else can I live? through no fault of my own, but needing to depend on ODSP, which is a punitive system that treats people with overwhelming disabilities as criminals from the very odd beginning of the process and forces me to try to survive under unacceptable poverty and misery. I have apps I have absolutely no legal protection compared to other Canadians and therefore very little control over my own life. I need the same level of dignity and respect from policymakers that other Canadians enjoy. At this moment, we are far from getting the same treatment offered to normal Canadians of every other stripe. We are currently being discriminated against and punished for being burdens on Canadian taxpayers. We also pay our taxes, but are legally considered as lesser beings within the law. This needs to end now. We must be recognized as full human beings under the law and be allowed the same quality of life as other Canadian citizens. My name is Darlene Clark. I'm an ACORN member. I think the rates of ODSP should be raised because as a single person living on ODSP amount of $590, sorry, is not enough. Food prices such, such as vegetables and fruit are going to go up because of the recent drought of farmers along with hydro rates and other things that we have to pay for. Um, ODSP remains the same for the whole year. 
and doesn't go up. Something must be done about this. Christmas time is another hardship, buying gifts for people when you don't have enough money for food. Children expect gifts. ODSP does not allow, allow you to save a lot either, so you have to struggle and plan. If you feel the rates of ODSP should increase, you can contact your local MP of the province of Ontario to fight for the rights of people in poverty. Hi, my name is Phyllis Andrews. I'm the treasurer of Batania area. I'm a member of ACORN. And I am here today to talk about social assistance and how it works for us low-income families. Um, I am on Ontario Works and I get $863 a month. That's include food, bus pass, and um, my rent is paid automatically. So. This money is include uh, bus pass food and for me and my five children. Um, it is hard because when you have children, uh, $800 is basically two days food for them and you have to deal with this for the whole month. And they're planning to cut this money and cutting this money I don't know when they cut it what family are going to do um, they haven't increased jobs for anyone I'm not seeing jobs increase I'm not seeing they're making any other way for families to survive other than cutting this money so I'm here to say a little bit and hoping I can help um, I'm with Ottawa Acorn, join Ottawa Acorn so we can stand and fight together. Thank you. Hi, I'm Cassie Halverson. I've been a member of Acorn since February 2012 when I was feeling trapped by, and bullied by social assistance office here in Ottawa as well as my landlord. I was very grateful when somebody knocked on my door and said they were from Acorn. And we sat down and talked and I learned all about it. Uh, what I want to say about social assistance is the inconsistencies, the amount of lost paperwork impedes their process, um, even when clients are complete their due diligence and hand in all the paperwork on time, follow all the steps. It is my belief that the social assistance offices are in complete disaccord with their own professional management and their own core values. Their improprieties have grave impacts on personal lives, pushing people to starvation, ill health, uh, lack of self-esteem issues, uh, pushing them basically to a lack of dignity in society. It's a very dangerous road to go down when you think about most disabilities and the effects that it has on, on their health. I was told consistently for seven months by my Ontario Works representative that my ODSP application was in and filed and all I had to do was wait for a phone call for an interview. I called every two weeks to find out where my application was at and when I could expect a phone call and she continually told me it's coming, they will call you when they're ready, uh, every, everything has been supplied, there's nothing further I can do. Last week I called and she happened to be on vacation, thank goodness because I had somebody else answer the phone who gave me a direct line to ODSB and then I found out that it was not submitted at all. They had no record of anything. 
to do with my file. So I'm starting at step one. I was also told that I could go in at any time and apply myself without going through Ontario Works first. Uh, when I attempted to do that, I was denied that I needed to sit down and make an appointment with my OW worker first. I was also told that if I had a language barrier or um, personality difference of some sort with a worker that we weren't understanding the same language, interpreting things differently, that I would, would request another worker. When I attempted to do that as well, I was denied. I asked to speak to the supervisor. Um, my worker came back to me saying that he would not speak with me. ACORN helped me bring my application to the landlord tenant board for my landlord. Um, they've also helped me with my ODSP application in the social assistance office. And I'm very proud to say I'm a member of ACORN because it's a chance that I can give back to the members, to the community, in any way that, that I possibly can. Thanks. My name is Lana Bogart and I have been on ODSB for the last six years. I went from a middle class lifestyle into abject poverty. And abject poverty is what happens in ODSB. Uh, if you try to live as I have on the race that we get, uh, you're basically living on about $50 a month if you have to pay market value rent which I've had to do the whole time. Uh, the startup fund has been extremely important. I used it once when I got behind in hydro bills and I owed the electric company something like $400. There was no way I could ever get that together. So the startup fund covered it and later on put me on payments that they made for me for the electric company, which came out of the benefit that I would have gotten anyway, but it saved my neck at that time. Another time I've used the startup fund is actually quite recently because I had to move. Now, when you move, you have to pay moving costs, especially if you suffer from arthritis or fibromyalgia as I do. Um, it's very hard to do a lot of heavy lifting or any kind of movement so consequently I did have to pay someone and also when you move into a new place there is always a deposit or first month's rent first and last month's rent uh, when you're living on about fifty dollars a week that's an impossibility to get together you know that you just don't get that kind of a windfall so without the startup fund, I wouldn't have been able to move this. That's why I do not understand why they're thinking of cutting that back. Um, people also use it when they're starting a new job and they need, for example, work boots or some specific clothing or, or just um, good looking office wear uh, that they can't afford to get. You don't get the whole fund, you only get what you have to spend. So it's not like if there's any way you can really abuse it. But when they cut it, all these things will be gone. Um, there's hundreds of things that this could be used for that won't be there anymore. Another thing, that, um, actually I think that our rates should be higher. Our rates are well below poverty line. I would like to see them come up to at least the poverty level. I don't think that's too much to ask. Uh, for people who have probably contributed a lot through their lifetime uh, to be living below poverty level, I think is an insult. So please call your MPP. Tell them that you're outraged with these cutbacks. Tell them that the old DSP rates need to be raised for plain human pride, dignity, and justice. We're in Canada, which is a wealthy country, which certainly can afford to look after its sick and its poor. Thank you. Hi, my name's Jack Bogart, and I've been an ACORN member for about five years now. Uh, I've always been politically active in one way or another, but having found myself in a situation where I'm living in poverty, 
gives you a little bit more of a push to go out and try to make some changes. I think the thing that really gets my goat is that the provincial government, led by the McGinty Liberals, is trying to balance the budget on the backs of the poorest of their constituents. I don't know whether it's a conscious move on their part to take advantage of people that very rarely have anyone to stick up for them, or that they don't think poor people will vote, but it's not right. And the government has an obligation to take care of all of its people, not just the wealthy, not just the uh, manufacturers and the corporations. They get plenty of tax breaks, they get plenty of tax dollars sent in their direction. To take away money from the people that can least afford to have money taken away from them, that's just unforgivable. Uh, we've got a situation where the startup fund is being cut for people on ODSP and, and on uh, Ontario Works. We've got people that are trying their darndest to find some contribution, some work that they can do, and only to have the government claw back 50% of everything that they gain. So you're asking people to do more, you're asking them to do more with less, and somehow you think that that amount of money is going to balance the, the provincial budget. It's not. It's not nearly enough. And it never will be, especially when you're giving your MPPs 30% pay raises. You need to take care of the least of your people, the people that have the least, the ones that are absolutely dependent on the government to be there for them in their time of need, when they're sick, when they're out of work because the economy is so bad. And those are the people that are being abandoned. The only way that we can make the government understand is by banding together. That's what ACORN's all about. We need to take the power of all of us together, making a stand on issues that are important to us, and make our voices heard. It's the only way they're going to listen at all. And to do that, we need the help of everybody that cares about poverty issues. There's so many different aspects and so many ways that we can work towards the same goal, which is social justice for all of our people. And as long as the government is not doing its job, which is to take care of those people, us, all of us, we have to step up and we have to say, enough is enough, you need to change directions. So. That's what ACORN's trying to do, and we'd love to have you join us. Hi, my name is Nadia Willard, and I want to start off by a, a quote that I have uh, uh, abided by and understood and fought for, and it was by Mahatma Gandhi, and he said that poverty is the worst form of violence anyone can endure. The Startup Fund is one of the programs that help people get out of poverty whether you are moving into a livable household rather than living in uh, a place where black mold and uh, unhealthy conditions and the uh, owners will not uh, fix anything, that's there. People need that. Whether you are going to start a new job and you need clean, nice clothing to go to work, even for an interview, that startup fund is there for those people. We have a country that is a have country. 
we need to start looking at what we are doing with the least it's, it's unconscionable that a country like Canada will allow poor people to remain poor. We need to start looking at ways at getting them, these people, into our communities, into our society, and give them meaningful purpose by taking away the startup fund. What do you think that's going to do to those people who have maybe a hope that they can break the cycle for themselves? It's just wrong. And when you think about it and you take a look at our MPPs who have given themselves a raise, the corporate companies that have asked for tax breaks because they are in our, in our province, this is just not right that the poorest of the poor have to pay the money for the trickle-down effect, which does not work. It just doesn't. Um, I've heard that now for 40 years, and not once has that said, oh, we give the money to the corporations, the big businesses, we, we are going to have uh, less poor people. It has not happened. I come out of nursing, and when I started nursing, I truly believed that there would be less poverty when I retired. I have retired, and there are more people who are in poverty than when I first started nursing. Again, totally unconscionable. Canada should, can, have the capabilities to lift countless people out of poverty. I think if you really, really want to help and realize the importance of this startup fund as well as the dignity, integrity, and all the good things that come out of living within a community, you should be looking at people and structures like ACORN that are doing exactly that, helping people get to be and do the best that they are in a community. So look at that. Talk to any one of us when you uh, have time or um, look us up on the internet. We're there. And please join us. We, we take this struggle seriously. Um, we do not give up. Social justice and human rights is a right. And this is a right that is being taken away. The startup fund must continue. Hi, my name is John Reddens. I'm presently a member of Ottawa Acorn. I live in the Ottawa South Riding uh, here in Ontario. And I was, I'm currently on ODSB. I think Ontario Disability should be restructured again. Um, one, one issue I ran into is I don't have an, I, I have an elderly family member living 16 hours away and I have no way of going to see her financially. The, uh, when you're on ODST you don't get money for travel unless she's passed away. That's not right. Another issue I have with, with social assistance or ODSP is it's not inflationary. It should be just to, to reflect inflation rates. The other last issue is the setting of, of rental rates here in, in Ontario. If, if the government sets a rate of how much they're going to raise rent in this province, that's how much where the rate increase should be for, for ODSB or Ontario Works to pay for that shortfall. Right now I'm only living on $40 a month for, for food, so I have to go once a, a month to the local food bank. So I urge you, so I urge you as, as Ontario citizens to contact your MPP, let them know also to join ACORN. Thank you. Hi, 
I'm Mavis Finnamore, and my brother Pat is on disability pension due to having Parkinson's disease. While we're very grateful that he has some income, the truth is things are getting very tight for him and for others on fixed incomes. For example, the last increase people on Canada Pension had was 2.8% effective January 2012. And the maximum increase people could receive was a little over $16 a month. But governments, both federal and provincial, often have clawbacks even to this little income. And they're thinking of cutting more. Like the specialized funds that can help cover expenses like first and last month's rent, especially when you have to move. $16 a month increase is not very much, especially compared to the whopping increase MPPs in Ontario voted themselves. A whopping $22,000 annually that works out roughly to $1,800 a month. $16 versus $1,800. Rich get more, poor get peanuts. Where is the justice in that? That's why I joined with others in ACORN to help fight for the protection of the most vulnerable people in Canada. Canadians are known to be a generous and compassionate people. We need everyone's help on this issue. Call, write, meet with your representatives in government, join with members of ACORN, and help protect the poor now. Thank you.